Hi, I'm Dr. Joel Solomon. I'm a neuropsychologist at the Mercy Outpatient Rehabilitation Center in Citrus Heights, and I'm here today to talk about concussion management. A concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury, or TBI, that typically resolves fully without long-term residual symptoms if managed correctly. However, people often focus on the first part of that sentence, that concussion is a mild injury that typically resolves fully, at the expense of the latter part of that sentence, if managed correctly. Unfortunately, this can lead to people mismanaging their concussion, resulting in worsening symptoms that take longer to resolve. There are many misconceptions about concussion that contribute to this mismanagement. It's not that big of a deal. Concussion is a medically mild injury. However, even mild injuries can become chronic and problematic if mismanaged. I didn't lose consciousness, so I don't have a concussion. Loss of consciousness is not required for the diagnosis of concussion. In fact, the vast majority of concussions do not involve loss of consciousness. My brain imaging was normal, so I don't have a concussion. Concussion is a clinical diagnosis. If you hit your head and experience post-concussion symptoms, you've suffered a concussion. Brain imaging, such as a CT scan or MRI scan, are not administered to diagnose somebody with a concussion. Rather, brain imaging is done to rule out a condition that's more serious, such as bleeding, bruising, swelling, skull fractures. These things don't typically happen in concussions, so brain imaging is typically normal. Instead, concussion symptoms are caused by neurometabolic dysfunction, disrupting the normal brain chemistry and metabolic functioning of the brain. It's kind of like a snow globe getting shaken up. Nothing's broken, but things are swirling. In order to talk about concussion management, let's review some common post-concussion symptoms. Typically, they're broken down into four categories. Physical symptoms include things like headache, nausea, dizziness, imbalance, sensory sensitivity, fatigue, Cognitive symptoms may include feeling mentally foggy, difficulty concentrating or remembering, and slowed processing. Mood symptoms may include irritability, increased emotionality, sadness, anxiety, and sleep symptoms may include drowsiness, trouble falling asleep, or sleeping more or less than usual. There's no good or bad cluster of symptoms, though your experience of symptoms after a concussion may be impacted by your prior health history. If you have a prior history of headache, migraine, learning disability, psychiatric conditions, or sleep disorder, those clusters of symptoms may be more prominent in your concussion. So how do we manage a concussion so that it can recover more smoothly? I encourage my patients to consider the analogy of a sprained ankle. A sprained ankle is also a medically mild injury that tends to recover fully, but can become chronic and problematic if poorly managed. How do we manage a sprained ankle so that it can heal? Well, initially we rest. We take it easy on our ankle. As we rest the ankle, it starts to feel better and is progressively able to tolerate more activity. How do we know if we're doing too much? Our body tells us through pain. Our ankle aches or twinges or throbs. Our body tells us very clearly, this is too much, I need a break. And what's likely to happen if we don't listen to our body and we persist in that activity despite the pain? The pain is likely to get worse and we might aggravate the injury, have a setback in a recovery and take longer to heal. Now, how do we apply these principles to concussion management? First, we rest. We take it easy on our brain. As we rest, our symptoms will likely start to improve. As our symptoms improve, we'll likely be able to tolerate progressively greater levels of activity. And how do we know if we're doing too much? Our body tells us, just like with the sprained ankle. But instead of telling us through pain, like the aching and twinging and throbbing, our body tells us through an onset or worsening of our post-concussion symptoms. Headache nausea, sensory sensitivity, mental fogginess, irritability. If any of these symptoms are coming on or getting worse, it's a sign that your brain is saying, this is too much, I need a break. And just like with the sprained ankle, if we persist in that activity despite the increasing symptoms, the symptoms will likely continue to get worse and we're more likely to have a setback in a recovery and making it take longer for the symptoms to resolve. Ultimately, it comes down to listening to your body. If your symptoms are increasing, your brain is telling you that you need a break. If you try to suck it up, tough it out, push through, you're likely to feel worse and ultimately take longer to recover. Worsening post-concussion symptoms are like flashing warning lights advising you to slow down. Oftentimes, patients tell me that their symptoms feel random and unpredictable, but that's rarely the case. Rather, there's typically a direct relationship between someone's activity and their symptoms. Let's go back to the sprained ankle. We exert our ankle by standing, walking, running, jumping. Those are the activities that are most likely to aggravate our injury. 
Well, we exert our brain primarily in three ways. Cognitive activity, physical activity, and environmental stimulation. Cognitive activity involves sustained mental focus, things like reading, studying, using your phone, working on the computer, watching television, or even engaging in conversation. Physical activity includes exercise, sports, housework, yard work. Environmental stimulation refers to our brain processing and making sense of what's going on around us in the environment. The noise, the light, commotion. The more going on around us, the harder our brain has to work to process it. These three factors, cognitive activity, physical activity, and environmental stimulation cause our brain to work harder. And when our brain is injured and has to work too hard, our symptoms increase. And if we ignore those symptoms and keep charging ahead, we're likely to feel worse, have a setback in our recovery, and take longer to recover. Instead, we should listen to our body, recognize increasing symptoms, and take a break to rest our brain. What does it mean to take it easy or rest? There's not a list of good or bad activities when it comes to resting. Instead, your body should be your guide. Imagine your symptoms being measured by a gauge, like a temperature gauge in your car. Let's say you've got green, then yellow, then orange, then red. If your idea of taking it easy still results in worsening of your symptoms, moving the needle towards the orange or the red, then you're still doing too much. Especially in the early stages of recovery, we're more concerned about the movement of the needle than the direction that it's pointing. For example, if you wake up in the green, spend a couple hours doing things around the house, and now you're in the yellow, you've got a worse headache, or you're getting nauseous, or the lights are bothering you now, that means the activity was too much because it made your symptoms worse. In contrast, if you wake up in the orange and spend a couple hours doing things and the needle stays steady in the orange, then those activities were probably okay. In this example, I'm more concerned about the needle that moved from the green to the yellow than I am about the needle that stayed stable in the orange. The primary guiding factor regarding taking it easy or resting should be whether or not the activity or the environment is aggravating the symptoms. If it's increasing your symptoms, it's too much for your brain. If it's not, then it's probably okay. If we're able to make it through the day in the green or the yellow, it's more likely the next day we're gonna have fewer symptoms. And if we string those days together, it's more likely that we'll be able to tolerate more and more as we go forward. So should I just stay in bed so I don't overdo it? No, activity and stimulation are not bad, quite the opposite. They're important to your health and your recovery. Let's go back to the sprained ankle. If your ankle is healed enough so that you can walk pain-free without crutches, it's good for your ankle to walk without crutches. It's good for strength, flexibility, range of motion, coordination. We just don't want to overdo it. The same is true for concussion. It's good to read and exercise and watch TV and be on your phone and hang out with friends, as long as it's not aggravating your symptoms. In the early stages of a concussion, people can often only tolerate these activities for short periods of time before they start to aggravate symptoms. But as they heal, they'll likely be able to tolerate greater activity and stimulation without moving the needle, so to speak. So activity and stimulation are good. We just want to do without overdoing. The only caveat is that we want to avoid activities with a greater risk of re-injury while we're recovering, such as certain sports or other physical activities. How long will it take to get better? Recovery time depends on multiple factors. Many people feel back to normal within a few weeks, whereas others may experience persistent symptoms for months or longer. As previously mentioned, prior history can impact symptoms in recovery. People with a prior history of headache, migraine, learning disability, ADHD, psychiatric conditions, or sleep disorder may experience a slower, more protracted recovery. And people with a prior history of concussion or more serious brain injury may also experience more significant symptoms that are slower to resolve. But most importantly, Recovery time is impacted by how we manage our symptoms. If you're doing things that aggravate your symptoms, or even worse than trying to suck it up or tough out or push through your symptoms, you're likely to have a slower recovery. But on the other hand, if you're doing without ever doing, listening to your body, and taking breaks in response to your symptoms, then you're doing everything that you can to facilitate a smoother, quicker recovery. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, you're welcome to attend our monthly concussion recovery class. For information about the class, time, date, location, you can reach us at 
The class is free to attend, but we ask that you call in advance to register. Thank you.